Well, good Saturday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Saturday. Um, you know, sometimes people can be really stupid. I was sitting here reading a story about a father yesterday who drank too much, loved his fireworks, and was literally shooting fireworks off his head and didn't realize that the firework that he was teasing everybody with, he had already lit, and it went off. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Don't do stupid shit. Okay? Let's just be clear. Don't do stupid shit. Oh, let me light fireworks off my head. That'll be a good idea. All right. Um, this is an interesting take. Herm Edwards, who is no fan of the Cowboys, so to speak, and it's silly season. We're 61 days away from the start of the season. Two months. We got two months, people, and then football season is here. I can't wait. I know you can't either. The Dallas Cowboys have done nothing to lock in their players. Dak Prescott, some people believe, will go through the season without a contract and see what's out there. A lot of people say, just let him walk. In fact, some people say, cut him now and just eat the money. Just get rid of him because we're sick of that guy. But Herm Edwards brought up an interesting take and said, for Dak Prescott, his best bet or the best team he's going to be able to be on is with the Dallas Cowboys. That him leaving going somewhere else isn't going to give him a better team with a better opportunity to win the Super Bowl. He was saying that the NFC, of course, is already loaded where you think uh, you got Jalen Hurts with uh, the Eagles. You got Brock Purdy, of course, with San Francisco and so on. Um, you look at Atlanta getting Kirk Cousins. Of course, the Cowboys have Trey Lance if uh, Dak doesn't stay there um, and so on. So what he's saying is if Dak decides to go to another team, that the teams he's going to go to will be worse teams. Maybe or maybe not. Um, it, may not it may be that they're worse teams at the moment. We don't know what the Cowboys are going to be this year with the lack of any movement. Um, sometimes a quarterback can change the narrative on a team completely. So hypothetically – Teams that might be interested in the NFC in a quarterback, one, you'd have to say the Giants, although the Giants definitely be going to a worse team. You have to look at maybe New Orleans. Derek Carr has not been good. And for Dak, going back probably to play in New Orleans, where he's from, might be advantageous. Or maybe it's a case of a team like the Rams where Matthew Stafford, you know, he is getting older. He's got a Super Bowl ring. He's having issues sometimes staying healthy. And, you know, he might be like Aaron Donald and say, I'm out. Now, that would be a situation where Dak Prescott could, could conceivably go to a better team. Now, if we're looking at a team like, say, the Tennessee Titans or something like that, you know, the Carolina Panthers, yeah, you're talking about definitely going to a team that's not – as built as good as the Cowboys. The other part of that that he didn't actually say too is is this. It doesn't matter what team. You know, the Eagles could go through and say, we're done with Jalen Hurts and we want to sign Dak Prescott. But if you're talking about wanting to be in the limelight, the spotlight, and constantly talked about, if Dak Prescott were to go to the Tennessee Titans, it would be almost like he was dead. They wouldn't talk about Dak Prescott anymore. 
Let's be clear here. The Dallas Cowboys drive the needle. And if you're here, just like Tony Romo found out, America's team, if you're not winning the Super Bowl, you know, it doesn't matter what you do, you're not good enough, and you are a failure. So that has to kind of play into the equation for Dak Prescott as well. So you have to wonder, because here's the other side of the equation that Herm didn't also look at too. When you look at it, there's something to be said to be able to say, I was once the highest paid player in the NFL. I don't know if that's something that's important to Dak Prescott. But more than likely, it's going to be difficult for the Cowboys to actually do that. But then again, what do I know? I'm a guy with a day job and a voodoo doll who's here talking about the Cowboys. I know one thing. It is, ugh, we are so close, but yet still so far away from the NFL season. Brother, it can't get here soon enough. We need to be actually talking about guys in pads, hitting each other. We need to be talking about interceptions in practice. In fact, let's be talking about practice. We sitting here, I supposed to be the franchise player, and we're in here talking about practice. I mean, it, listen, it's we're so talking hard about right now. practice. It's not so a hard. game, not a game. It's hot not outside. A game. It's we're real about hot. practice. And we, not a game. We in such bad shape. We want to talk about practice. Well, I guess I'm going to go back out here to the blast furnace, doing some work here at the Red Brick House, trying to get this sink and stuff together. And I got to go under the crawl space on, well, actually two different crawl space. My work is never done. All right, good people. As always, you know I appreciate you guys. Hope you all are having a great day. Game time, Brian. Hope you're staying cool because I know it is hot as hell outside. And, oh, I almost forgot. Happy Brandon Albury Day. In case you guys didn't know it, this is what should give you guys hope. One year ago, today exactly, the Dallas Cowboys signed USFL Brandon Albury for his first season with the Dallas Cowboys. And in that season, he became an All-Pro, 157 points, 94.7 field goal percentage, which was third, and 10 for 10 on 50-yard-plus field goals. Shout out to Brandon Every. Cowboy.